Welcome back to my channel and to another financial wellbeing video. I'm really excited to share this one today because it honestly has completely changed my life and I wanted to share it with you guys as well for anybody that is looking to get better with their finances, looking to pay for something or save up for something special, maybe get out of debt, just to get a better financial well-being. And that is going to be my payday routine. So for anybody that is maybe looking to get better with their finances, get just their head out of the sand when it comes to getting out of debt or maybe just taking control of your finances, then hopefully this video is gonna have loads of really helpful tips to take away. This is, of course, just my own system. I'm not a financial advisor, so make sure you do your own financial advice, but this is what I use, and this is what has completely, completely changed my financial well-being, and I'm so excited to share it with you. So grab yourself a notepad and some coffee or whatever it is maybe you're drinking, and let's get into the video. audacity of this weather by the way i've just set this all up it's been pouring with rain the whole day the entire day perfect conditions because it wasn't too dark it wasn't too bright i press record and the sun is sunning it's so sunny so hope i'm going to switch to this side hopefully you can see me okay and i'm not too blown out by the sun but the show must go on so First of all, I want to just say that obviously everybody is different. So your financial goals are gonna be different. Your income's going to be different. I'm self-employed, for example. So the way that my payments come in is different. Uh, Stu, my husband, he is employed. So he has a paycheck. So it's much more standard, much more predictable, much more monthly. You know what's gonna you know, come in mostly, always gonna be the same. So that is something that is gonna differ depending on your situation. So take from this video, what you will take the bits that work for you if maybe you are employed and you don't need to do several of these steps then that's okay just take from it what you find useful i need to mention here none of this video is sponsored none of it is financial advice this is just what i do and this is just the things that i use to help me better my financial position it's getting so hot in here <laughs> so i find these videos really helpful and i find hearing what other people do really really insightful and just interesting. So hopefully you'll also find the way that I budget my paycheck interesting and how I've just made such huge improvements in my financial well-being since doing this paycheck method. I've got my notes so that I don't forget anything because it is quite a set routine, it's quite detailed, but that is how I've just got into such a better financial position because I have my routine, I know exactly what's gonna be happening every month, and I just know it's predictable. Even though my income isn't predictable, I'm self-employed, so obviously payments are not a set date, um, and you're often left waiting months and months and months for invoices to be paid, which is very frustrating, but unfortunately that is self-employed freelancer life. This happens a lot. I just need a, a system that even if I'm not being paid that month, I know I've got my system in place so that I don't go into debt, I don't default on any payments, I can still budget my money, I can still save money, I can still uh, pay into my various sinking funds and my emergency fund, things like that. So I just have to have a system and it works really well for me. I have got lots of budgeting trackers over on my website, which is laurajoannajarvis.com, and there's sinking fund trackers, there's bud uh, debt tr payoff trackers, spending trackers, and there's really detailed, and I'll show you on the screen, really, really detailed uh, sort of income expenses, but we're breaking it down into detail, like the payment calendar, the debt avalanche method maybe, or your income that you can save it. Like it's really, really detailed when we go into the website. It's completely customizable. I've got lots of different colors ones as well. This one is the green one, just cause green is my favorite color. But as you can see, we've got like spending analysis. These figures, by the way, are just made up figures just so you can change them for your own figures. But we've got the dashboard to help us see exactly like a really good breakdown of everything of savings, debt, expenses, income bills. Uh, we've got the calendar so we know exactly what's coming out on what day. We've got the payments tracker, even just down to saving pots trackers. And as I said, the debt avalanche as well. I just think like if you have the tools in place to help with your system, then it stops it from being overwhelming and it stops it from being sort of slipping out of reach to make sure you actually do do the things that you're meant to be doing each month. So let's talk about my absolute first 
thing that I do when it comes to my paycheck and how it's helped me get into, you know, buy this house, <laughs> save up for the house, buy the house. And now, Natalie, how it's helping us pay off a large chunk of the house. And I'll get into that shortly. Okay, so the first thing that I do with my paycheck routine is to make sure that it's all present and correct. I know that probably sounds quite obvious, but you never know. Sometimes, especially if you're self-employed, you can miss things or brands could pay you wrong, incorrectly. Or even if you're looking at a pay slip from a company, if you are employed by somebody, make sure the pension contributions are correct. Make sure your health insurance or any taxable benefits are correct. Make sure your commission is correct if you work on a commission basis. Make sure um, as per the amount of days in the month, pro rata, the pay is correct. Just these little details, just get into the habit of looking at your paycheck or the invoice that comes in and saying, yep, that's all right. Or if it's not, then you can obviously do something about it there and then. But that is like something that's just so basic, but it will help you really get to understand like what to expect coming in every single month, what you're gonna do with it, because we'll talk about that shortly, and how it's gonna impact your overall financial picture. So priority number one is gonna be your bills and things like your food, and your rent or your mortgage and any non-negotiable bills. So this is something that we automate because it's like the less thinking we have to do about it, the better. The easier the routine is, the less likely you are to stray from it or to find it difficult or just to sort of, it's that low lift, you know, give yourself the lowest lift possible Automate the savings or the, the um, bills, sorry. So automate them to come out. If you know you're gonna get paid at the end of the month, automate them to come out maybe like the first of the month. Give yourself a couple of days buffer in case it falls at a weekend or it's delayed for any reason. And then just make sure you have those automated so you don't default on the payments and you don't get into debt. And especially if you are in debt already, this is a really good method to take that away from you. Basically, you know that it's gonna be paid out to your bills, out to your mortgage or your rent, and you don't have to think about it. I also make sure that I pay my credit card off in full. I've spoken about this before. I personally, it's my decision to have a credit card. And that's because it's good for my credit rating. It's because I don't need to borrow the credit, but because I can pay it off every single month. And because I get my Avios points, which then pay for free flights. So if you haven't got a credit card that gives you benefits, definitely look at getting one if you can be responsible enough to pay it back every month that you're gonna benefit from. I can leave my Avios link below. I think we both get some Avios points when you, if you would sign up. But I just use it every single time I buy something online. You get the extra um, security of knowing that you're protected. And I just know I pay it off every single month in full and it just will improve my credit rating. But again, do your own research. For me, the Avios standard account, I think it was, the Amex, um, it just works for me and I get my free air miles. Now for me, this may well not matter to you because you may well get a PAYE, so you're taxed when your pay gets paid, but I pay my tax off. So I don't need to pay the tax man until twice throughout the year, but I have to have the money ready for it. So rather than having a very, tricky, expensive tax bill twice a year, I just pay myself that tax into an account which is an easy access but high interest savings account. So you could choose to maybe put that into your banking uh, tax, uh, high interest account or maybe into premium bonds or uh, somewhere that you can extract it easily but it's gonna get a better reward. So I'll talk a little bit more about premium bonds sh shortly because we have used them for over probably 10 years. Uh, but for me, tax is non-negotiable. It's a bill, I have to pay it out, and then it sits there ready, earning interest to pay the tax man when he wants his money, which is, <sighs> but it has to be done, right? <laughs> so that's your priority one, your bills and your food amount and paying off any debt as well. So that's my first port of call when I get paid. The next one, <laughs> dark again is my favorite one and that is paying myself first this brings me so much joy to know that every single month i have my money come in and once i've done my non-negotiables i can pay myself first this is the number one thing that has completely changed my financial well-being my financial position it's helped me save hunt like tens of thousands of pounds and it continues to do so and this is so crucial in this pay day check paycheck routine is to automate this so what do i mean by pay yourself first our main priority at the moment is to is to pay off our house as much as possible by the time our mortgage rate is renewed because in the uk and everywhere um after the absolute wild time of trying to buy a house um, and everything being so expensive and through the roof, 
the mortgage rates have since gone up. So we not only have a huge debt to pay off because we got on the ladder much later in life, we also are very concerned about the rate of mortgages when we come to renew because we got a really low rate because that was a good part about buying when we did. The rates were really low, but the houses are really expensive. So we are on a mission. That's our main priority at the moment is to pay off as much as we can over the next three years for when our mortgage is renewed. So we're doing a lump sum, which you can do 10% of the mortgage total over the course of once a year. This will change depending on your mortgage, but you can also pay three times the monthly amount as an overpayment each month. We're not doing it that way because it doesn't actually reset the rate at that time. It actually doesn't reset the rate until you reapply for the mortgage. Whereas when you do a bulk payment of 10%, it actually resets the rate there and then. And over the course of the mortgage, that is tens of thousands of pounds in interest that we're saving. So that's our main goal at the moment. Obviously it's gonna be different for other people, but we're really focused on that. So when I say, say pay myself first, this is the tools that I use to be able to get to that point of paying off that once a year, high, uh, big payment towards the mortgage. I really hope the video is helpful for you guys. If you are enjoying it, please do give it a like so that other people can find it. And also think about subscribing to the channel. I've got so many financial well-being, money mindset, how to save money, how to live frugally. I've got, I've got it all here. I've been doing this for many, many years. So hopefully there is something here to help you. So do subscribe and also think about giving the video a like if you're enjoying it. So for my long-term investment goal, I have a Stocks and Shares ISA, which I pay into every single month as an automated payment. As I said, I don't really even need to think about it or touch it. It's automated and it goes in there. And for me, I got very delayed, I was very late to the party when it came to investing because my financial journey only really began when we started saving for our house. Well, really when we started saving for our wedding, that's when we realized how much we were wasting of our money and our paycheck every time it came in. We didn't have any routine, we didn't have any structure. And we suddenly were paying for our, more, our ha wedding <laughs> 15 years ago-ish. And we were like, we can save so much money. So once we started realizing how much you can sort of make your money work for you, and that's, I'm talking about compound interest and the way that savings work, it completely revolutionized how our money situation is. And since then, obviously we've been really savvy with money, living frugally, trying to pay off what we can, saving for the house. And it's just like a really great goal to have those. And I've done tons of video on, videos on money mindset and how to be better with your money and how to save money. So definitely go and check out all of those videos if you haven't already. Um, but there's so many different ways in which we have increased our financial well-being and our wealth and made our money work for us. And Stocks and Shares ISO is a way that's like my number one investment that I make every single month and obviously Unfortunately, we didn't get on it very early, but what do they say? The best time to invest is 50 years ago. The second best time is today. There's a saying there somewhere. It's probably not that. Um, but for me, knowing that compounded interest is a long-term thing, it just is a savings that I don't even look at. It goes in there every month and it builds over time. I'm actually like 50% year on year up. I think I saw it yesterday, which is wild when you think how much interest you'd get from a bank. <laughs> Definitely not that. Um, and in fact, when I first sort of investing, the rates were so low, which is great for mortgages, but definitely not for savings. Um, but yeah, to get 50% is wild. Over time, that's gonna grow and it will be my long-term investment to you know, become a millionaire. There's also different ICEs as well. Obviously, the, the UK has just introduced the British ISA. You can have more than one ISA, but you can pay into one ISA a year. Um, things are changing, so check in once the budget has all, all been implemented. Um, but I choose a Stocks and Shares ISA because I had a Lisa and I did a whole video on why I canceled my Lisa, the lifetime ISA, because we were trying to buy a house with it and unfortunately, where we live, the bracket was too low. It's like they haven't increased it in line with house prices for like for so long. Um, so we canceled that and I didn't need it for my pension. So yeah, that was our decision. Stocks and shares ISA, but you can get lots of different ISAs. My next priority, non-negotiable, is paying into my pension. Now I have a SIP, which is a which is self-invested pension plan um, because I'm self-employed, uh, but the government do top it up by 25%, which is amazing because obviously that's the sort of thing when, if you're working for a company and they can match your contributions, 
max it out if you can, like four, five, six percent, whatever you can put into your pension. You can save up to 60,000 pounds into your pension a year, and you can actually invest 100% of your salary into your pension if you so wish, if you don't need the money. Um, but for me, it's really tax efficient because it's actually taken out, and for anybody, it's really tax efficient because you're paying into your pension before you pay tax. So say you earn 50K and you can put 10K away a, month, a year <laughs> into your in, um, pension, then you only get taxed on the 40K and then obviously you're in a different tax bracket and it's just a really tax efficient way of doing it, especially when you're getting the government contributions as well. And if you do have, or if you don't have a pension or you want to look at a self-invested pension as well, then I use Penfold. I have used them for years. I actually transferred my Aviva ones to them and it's really easy because they just do it for you. And again, low lift, someone else does it. I know it's done every month and you don't have to do too much legwork, literally just set it up. And I've got also a referral link if you wanna use it, which I'll share in the description bar, which is 25 pound if you wanna sign up to it, which I will get as well. And it's just easy. It's just there and you know that your money is being invested every month for your future. So really, really important. If you don't have a pension, make sure you get one today. Check out the link in the description bar. As I said, it's free and easy to use and you get 25 pound free. Okay, so once I've done my life, uh, my stocks and shares ISA and my pension and my tax, <laughs> I then look through my bank and I want to make sure here that all of my subscriptions are still stuff I want. I want to make sure that I don't have anything coming out that I didn't expect or that maybe it's gone up and I want to re-look re at it, say insurance, for example. Make sure you're definitely paying what you're expecting and there's nothing untoward there. Maybe if you've had like a return, if you've definitely been refunded, just really get granular here. Make sure you know exactly what's coming in and what's going out so you've got no surprises. And then I check my credit score, which is another really key thing for your paycheck routine. It's free. I use um, Clear Score, I think it's called Experian, but it's a free system and my credit score is 999, gold star, angel, <laughs> uh, which is, it has been a hard journey to get there because, and this is why you should check your credit rating every month, especially if you're trying to buy something, because I learned the hard way when I was like 20, 25 maybe. We went on holiday with friends, with Stu as well, and we rented a car. I was the only one with the credit card. I actually think I got the credit card out to get the car. And when we got back, they basically said that we had done something to the car, but the whole document they sent was in Spanish, so we couldn't understand it. And I just thought, we didn't do that. We have all the pictures. We know we're okay. They signed it off when we got there. It was a bit of a sort of like, not scam, but you know, they were trying to get some money out of us. Um, and I was like, oh, it'll just go away. It didn't go away. And it went on my credit record for like five years. Thankfully, I didn't get too impacted by it, but it really reduced it. So checking your credit score is just safeguarding you, especially if you're trying to save for something, you know, even if it's a mobile phone contract that you didn't pay or you didn't think, you, or you thought you'd canceled or something, or a missing payment, any defaults, it's so impactful on your credit score. So just know what you're dealing with every single month. And especially if you are building your credit score, then it's amazing to see it go up every month. And I'm really proud of mine now because it's, as I said, no, 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 best score you can get. And yeah, it's taken a while to get there, but things like borrowing money, even if you don't need it, as long as you pay it back every month has really helped me because the banks can see or the credit rating people can see, oh, she can repay money. She has, you know, doesn't default on payments and, you know, she can prove herself as a good creditor. Creditor? Yeah. <laughs> the next one I do is automated savings. Again, it's a really good payday method to automate this. I actually use Plum, which I've spoken about in here for ages. Again, I have a referral. If you'd like to come and join Plum, it's free. I don't use the paid one. It's a free system. It's so good because you basically link your bank to it and then every, you can do different things and like the paid membership we have like different options, but I just use the free one and it will do like a roundup. So if I pay two pound 83 for something, it'll put the 17p I think that's right, into a fund, which is little obviously, but it does add up. And I also have, um, in fact, let's have a look now at what my current amount is in my balance. It can see whether you, how, like how many bills you have coming out and it can see, oh, she's been paid this much this month. We can probably afford to take 40 pounds or 20 pounds or 10 pounds. 
and you won't even notice it's gone. And it's just so amazing for saving money. And I use it in a kind of sinking funds way. So at the moment we're saving for a holiday. So I will use Plum and I'll take that money out at the end. Look at this. Can you do that? Look at that. I didn't miss it. It was just literally coming out. It's amazing. So as I said, if you want to try it out, I'll put my link below. It's free. Um, you could use the paid one, but for me personally, I just, yeah, I don't need that one. So the next one is sinking funds. As I said, um, I use sinking funds for holidays, purchases for the house, treats, like a, a hotel night away or something like a spa day. I use sinking funds for the fun stuff as well as like paying for stuff. So like a holiday, for example, and I'll put like a hundred pound a month into my sinking fund for holiday. And then I know when it comes to buying the holiday, I can buy it guilt-free because I know that the money has been saved for it. And I haven't really noticed it. Like some months, if I'm not able to, I will have to reduce it or not pay it that month. Um, but it's just sort of like a, an automatic thing for me that I know if I pay that in there and it just takes away the guilt because I struggle to spend money in a way that I never used to because I'm now so much better with money and I know how much more you can do with money if you are good with it rather than just spending it un, um, mindfully. So yeah, when it comes to it, I'm a bit like, oh, that's a lot of money to spend. But with sinking funds, it's literally allocated to say, that is for that holiday. You go, honey. You don't feel guilty. You go and spend your money on your holiday. I've just realized I've skipped a really important part of the payday routine. This was up there after pension. And no, it was before pension. It's my emergency fund. So this is the not so fun money. This is the dentist bills, the car repairs, MOT services, stuff that might go wrong around the house. This is the money that you really don't want to spend but if you had a bill like my car cost me like six seven hundred pound a couple of months ago and i had the money in my emergency fund if i didn't it would have made me not go into debt but if you aren't good with your money and you're at a position where you're just sort of learning about money then it's going to really impact you if you have to pay out 500 pounds right so an emergency fund is there to know and they do say three to six months expenses obviously if you're new to this if you're not very good with with your money that's not gonna be easy to come by. So it's just about saving that every single month. And that is part of my payday routine. I just take that money out. I put it into my emergency fund. And I personally put it into a high interest account or also premium bonds. I've got that to talk about when I go back down to where I am in my list because that's uh, just somewhere that you can access the money basically as a boring emergency fund. And you know, at the end of the year, if you didn't need it and you know you can save it again, maybe take a little bit out, put it into a sinking fund, but make sure it's always at a level where if you ever need, like if someone loses their job and you have to pay the mortgage for three months while they find a new one, have you got the money to do it basically? And then premium bonds. So if you are new to premium bonds, they're basically a government backed savings account or savings system where you can save up to 50,000 pounds per person. Children can have them too. We saved our house deposit in there. You, at the time, it was sort of like a little bit better than interest, but with interest rates rising, it's not something I would recommend as like a long-term goal or long-term plan for your money because you're not, it's like the chance of winning. So you could win up to a million. The chances are, if you've got maxed out like 50 grand, you're probably gonna win like 250 pound a month maybe. Um, so you just need to do the sums to make sure it's actually beneficial to you. But of course you may go months without winning anything. So then it's like not really worth having them. So for us with our house deposit, it was just somewhere that was safe, that we could put two lots of 50,000 if we got to that and we knew that we had the money there that we could access when we needed it. And we could have won a million pounds. We did not. But we won a thousand pounds the month we bought the house just before we took the money out. So it refreshes on like the third or fourth that's when you get the draw to say if you've won anything in the bonds and we had to pay the mortgage by like the 11th. So I was like, let's just leave it in. And I was manifesting my absolute butt off. If you are into manifestation, I've done a whole video on how we manifested this house and law of attraction, which I know might not be for everybody. Um, and we won a thousand pounds, which we were desperate for because we just found out we had to pay so much more in stamp duty than we were expecting. And this came at the best time. So that's the biggest win I've ever had on premium bonds. Usually it was about 200 pounds or hundred pounds a month. Um, but yeah, we won a thousand pounds. So yeah, we put some in there, just not very much. We just have it there as like a little, just in case we win a million. Let's talk about if you are brand new to, uh, to budgeting and 
you're in debt, you don't know how to budget your money, you don't know how to, you don't know what's coming in, what's going out, you're in a very, very beginning position, but you wanna do better, you wanna to get to a good financial position. The first step is to do a financial audit, which is way more complex than it sounds. It's basically like a money date. Sit down with your bank accounts, with your partner, with whoever you live with, and just look at them and go, that's a lot of money on Deliveroo, or didn't know I spent that much on ASOS, and really get granular here and go into detail because these, this like one thing will change everything for you once you know how much money you've got in there and how much you're wasting or spending or not saving it can really change your money mindset. That's like the key thing to do. If you do want to start tracking your finances better, obviously, as I said, I've got loads on my website, which are um, budgeting trackers, really in depth, like how it all works or just debt payoff tracker, sinking funds tracker. Um, just get into the detail. Like once you get to know it, it gets you less overwhelmed by it, which is the main thing. Also sit down and work out where you wanna be in five years time. Like what do you want to do financially? Do you wanna buy a house? Do you wanna get out of debt? Do you wanna save for a lovely holiday? Like what does your financial future look like? Because without those goals, how are you gonna hit a goal if you don't know what you're going for? You just cut me off because I've been talking for too long. I hope this is interesting, guys. I really do. Find out which budgeting system works for you. You may well be overwhelmed with some systems, but actually others work for you. Like there's a 50, 30, 20 method. So savings for those amount percentages. You've got the zero-based budgeting where every penny is accounted for, every single penny. There's the pay yourself first method that I use. There's lots of different budgeting methods and I've done a whole video on budgeting. So check that one out if you haven't seen it already. Um, but yeah, just make it simple and easy as possible so that you don't get overwhelmed with it and you don't miss things. Just know if you're not in a good financial position now, it's not your story. Like you can change this at any point, even if you were in really mega debt, it's not the end of the story. Like just decide to be better with your money, set yourself a good routine, set yourself goals, make sure you have fun money in your budget because otherwise it's miserable. Um, and just really focus on it and just realize that there is a, dif a different way if you're in debt and you don't feel like you can get out of it. There is other ways. You just have to be really focused, disciplined of course, and just know it's not forever. Know that you're not alone. There's loads of resources here and on my website and on my Instagram and my TikTok, which is all Lara Joanna Jarvis everywhere. And those trackers are over on my website as well if you're new to budgeting. But I really do hope this was helpful and interesting and informative. Let us know in the comments if you've got any questions. Our community is amazing um, at helping other people. We do, I just really want to help people get better with their finances and reach their goals. It makes me so happy to know when people message me and they say like, we bought a house because of your videos or we got out of debt because of what you taught us. And as I said, it's only my own research and strategy and tips and stuff, but it's worked for me and it's helped me save tens of thousands of pounds. So hopefully it helps you too. Thank you so much for watching and I'll let you go now and I'll see you so soon. Take care, bye. <laughs>